as any great gift to the world could humbly tell you, joy is a valuable resource. Any day you receive it is one to stash in the heart. Though the day you learn it's also a finite resource threatens to break said heart. Video games, being our latest and perhaps greatest great gift, knows how to do both, likely better than any other. The happier they make you, the higher the voltage when they shockingly disappoint. Mm. I smell a mood fatter than Canada. Yes, we're all intimately familiar with disappointment. Such is the fate of an eternal pursuer of smiles. The frown was invented for a reason, people. Hopefully I can pin it down while not being a disappointment myself. Too late. Alrighty, disclaimers. All my choices are conditional on official developments, not community development. In other words, only the cause and effect of the proper professionals behind each misstep are considered, and not atrocities committed by the player base. It's all on the brain children. Be it an entire game, creative choice, or executive dumbassery, yeah, lots to talk about. Share your own list, it was probably easier to make than mine. Let's roll! <laughs> Call me a moldy boomer wrapped in threads laced with mummy farts, but I'm real half and half on the digital age. Stop me if you heard this one before. I actually like owning the things I buy. You can tell me it's mine, but if I can't touch it, it ain't mine. Physical for life! But virtually replicating historical artifacts for preservation's sake is far better than leaving the Aether to babysit them. <clears throat> I have come to say the n-word. And trust me, it's hard enough without an R. Nintendo. Oh lordy. I dodged the cliche of flushing Switch Online down Lago's S gravy esophagus just fine. But that only meant something else was guaranteed to hit. In this case, with the deliciously retro soundbite. You mind laying out your thought process when you killed virtual console guys? It was like that of a supercomputer when you came up with it. But the slow yet steady steps taken to phase it out of the public market. Yeah, I hear the sounds of somebody not wanting money. You know, company food. It's like financial Atkins, this shit you're doing. Don't. I'll admit adding bits of old catalog and sticking them in a clean vintage plug and play system is nifty. And hell, including them in your online service adds value where it's really fucking needed. But why can't I just buy them all to own them all? I love these old games. Sure, I'd prefer physical, but still. Our great gaming grandpa is supposed to be fun, man. Not racist to grass the one time we want to frolic in the grass. It's so limiting. And for a company I know damn well has unlimited joy to give, taking that away because waffles halfway offends me. It's pre-made code from billions of years ago. Pictures in a phone take more space. You give goods, I consume, your wallet gets thick and juicy. Done. Next. Some say high expectations are just an excuse to dodge mediocrity, completely forgetting that that shit's a homing torpedo and we're a crippled 60-ton boulder. Still, it's a sign that we still practice hope. This is beautiful. But when our friends start requiring fresh straight jackets every Sunday, yeah, that's ugly. <laughs> Three is one hell of a number. It's company, it's crowd, and turns on the charm on its dates with time. It's also the amount of swings you have before striking out, so... Mm. Three titans of entertainment turned thick skulled idiot pariahs. The live footage of Konami, Bethesda, and Blizzard taking the piss after the piss makes a 1000 monster truck pileup look like a utopia ruled by Mr. Clean. First up... Blizzard. I've never given even a phantom of a fuck about them, but banning and fining a top player of one of your games for fighting against atrocities plaguing his home country and lying about Warcraft 3 Reforged being a faithful remaster, there goes any chance of me ever caring about you. Still, a lot of my friends cared. They'd be owed an apology if that meant anything from you anymore. Next, Bethesda. God. This hurts. Turning their fun as fuck game franchise about living through the aftermath of a global disaster into an actual global disaster with no chance of living through turned them into the hit 
punchline of 2018. Disgusting incompetence. Lying about promo item craftsmanship. Running away with the money. Milking poor loyal customers with your shitty subscription service. Assholes. If that new Elder Scrolls isn't Breath of the Wild good, you clowns are done. And finally... Konami, the big top 10 of this whole damn circus, abandoning your beloved franchises, focusing more on gambling with stupid ass pachinko machines, and fucking humiliating and exiling Hideo Kojima. My spit would dodge you if it was launched your way. <sighs> yeah, I'm done here. Double standards can be fascinating. Sure, they suck and cause problems, but they kind of show you what people are afraid of. Sonic fans are ripe for this case study. No matter how many times he screws up, they'll never turn on him for fear that he won't come back. It's heartwarmingly fucked. I mean, Come on, you gotta love him. <laughs> hey, what's this big red button do? I hate Sonic. <laughs> Open letter to all technicians. Don't make your self-destruct button shiny and gigantic. Make it puny and smear it in muck splooge and decaying dreams. Nobody will touch it then. It is somewhat fortunate that we now have an example of that to not follow. But man, man. The year 2014 saw a brilliant push to rebrand post-2010 Sonic into something fresh and exciting. Goofy, enjoyably stylized redesigns. An all-new world. Nay, generation. Mmm, never heard that one before. The TV show is awesome as hell, but Sonic Boom's attempts at being a game were more like attempts on his life. You think the Wii U needed an atrociously unpolished, horrendously dull, subtractive defamation of beloved colorful super mammals? In the middle of the awesome modern resurgence, no less. Rise of Lyric makes my stomach scream. On top of, like I said, being unpolished, dull, and backass on so many things, it added absolutely nothing to the franchise. No, not even a mortal wound that helped it grow. Sonic 06 is at least hilariously bad and was a valuable, if not harsh, learning experience. Sonic Boom's highs are textbook average and its lows are too low for even paper to limbo under. Playing it just makes you feel embarrassed for liking Sonic. And I was excited for this too. Just excuse! Now! It all went by too fast. Bullshit! Don't talk like you know what that word means. Wasn't there a 3DS game too? I don't know, I don't, I don't give a shit. Knuckles, please save us! I'M YELLING WORDS! <laughs> Formerly just a very strong creative suggestion, flying the flag of originality is beyond critical for an art form these days. Wash the fucking thing or wave it around in a stupid way at the absolute bare minimum. If you're gonna slurp up my manis, it's common etiquette to at least do it like nobody else. A game console without exclusives is basically a shiny drink coaster. Gee, wouldn't that be stupid? <laughs> Ha, huh, boy oh boy oh boy. Anybody who's become rich and successful can only be one of two things. Brilliant or lucky. Remind me again, which one is Microsoft? Cause it's kinda looking like neither right now. You might say I'm fulfilling the cliche of Nintendo fanboy by unconditionally hating the Xbox One. Except, no. Reminding the capital M how much they fucked up this last generation is what binds us as a species. Leave the Wii U out of this, man. That at least had games. Oh, you bet your ass I ain't ever letting this one go. Don't quote me on this. But didn't you clowns promise your cutting-edge home console would have enticing exclusives? Like, the reason why we should give a shit? What happened to that? With the sole exception of Rare Replay, which in itself is simply a collection of old masterpieces made mostly on your rival's platforms, there is not a damn thing worthwhile you can find only on the X-Boner. Everything else was either multi-platform or a timed exclusive that ended up on PC later anyway. 
and better. In addition to being an atrociously unprofessional blunder, you pretty much spit all over your brand loyalists who dared to expect special catering. This probably would have been much higher if I was a diehard Microsoft supporter, but even as a casual customer I want to puke. It's like even they themselves knew that Xbox One's just hip slang for just buy a PC. Like this whole thing was just a tip jar. Oh, sorry. We'll get it next time though. Gah! Remember what I said. The happier a player's made, the more deadly a shock of disappointment grows. So take one of the great kings of your heart, and the pressure to stay king could effortlessly crush all 15 legendaries that run it. Yet despite being pretty much my favorite thing ever, Pokemon's never struck out hard for me. Got iffy a grand total of twice, but it never lasts. Yep, never lasts. It's never fun when it arrives, but when the time comes to ask, what the hell happened? The answer is a mythic monster just waiting for you to catch it. I can't ever seem to shut up about my historical disappointment in X and Y, but long after coming to terms with the sub-100 Pokemon roster, I clear the air with the one thing I simply can't get over. It never gave me a second chance. Although not everyone likes it, every single region on the face of the Poke Earth merited a strong look back. Be it in a remake, refresh, or sequel, we got another chance to see its worth. But after saying adios, Kalos, for the first time, it was the last. You can keep your Dexit. You can keep your Let's Go's. Not revisiting the X and Y mainland is what really got me. It's so discomforting. Every player, be it a huge fan that loved Kalos, the naysayers who think it's bland and lacking, or hell, guys like me who merely felt indifferent, never got to see the untapped potential, huge improvements, or added exposure they were hoping for. When it gets to the point where your third pillar in your mascot legendary trio isn't even fully built until the next generation, I must repeat, what the hell happened? It honest to Arceus felt like they wanted to forget it, even while it was new, even when it needed them arguably more than any other. Cubone ain't the only tragic orphan in the series, and there's no evolution awaiting it. <laughs> Nothing's more hype than Smash Bros. Nothing. It could inhale for an ugly sneeze and we'd still impregnate our pants. Ridley! Fuck yes! King K. Rool! Oh my god, take me! Motherfucking Banjo and Kazooie! Ha ha ha, assimilate my existence, Daddy Sakurai. Kirby! Kirby! King K. <laughs> I try to be respectful to homicidal balls of cosmic bubble yum. Fair to say, maybe I don't know what it's like. I don't know. But this kind of downgrade? Even Dr. King would be speechless. Hate to stack shit on top of an already oppressed kind, but I have no idea how Kirby mains sleep at night knowing how hard they were gypped. Sakurai's starborn son is one of the most versatile characters in gaming history. Dozens of unique weapons of infinite chaos and a lot of cute hats. He was destined to be one of the all-time coolest characters in all of Smash. So, please tell me, what the fuck is this? Out of the 21 move slots Smash allows, 11 of Kirby's are basic, almost stock kicks. No personalized flair, no diversity, and zero franchise loyalty aside from kinda resembling old fighter animations. I suppose this may have been an attempt to replicate how ability-less Kirby feels in his games. Okay, yeah, ask anybody why they like Kirby. You're definitely gonna hear tons of them say his feet. Nobody likes using abilityless Kirby. It's boring as fuck. Even after two decades, they've only barely gotten halfway. Half of his moveset is fun and interesting and <clears throat> loyal, yet the other half is the blandest, most 
boring Smash material I've ever seen. And shit, his playstyle is practically defined by these boring ass moves. Yeah, I don't think you realize how serious this is. Kirby is boring. Those words should not be friends. I forbid it. See, this is why I love Mega Man. He's what Kirby should have been. Look, I don't need perfect accuracy here. Otherwise, he'd be quintuple S tier. But this is not this. Fun? Not fun. Omnipotent cosmic silly punny? Foot the character. I'm the last person to suggest that life is simple, but likewise, I'm also not one to deny patterns I don't like. And the vicious cycle is one of them. Reach one end, loop back to the opposite, rinse, repeat, at a selective speed. I get vertigo just writing it. One day you're king, then peasant, then king again, then peasant again? Ha! You wish. <laughs> Kill it! This is why you don't pull your job off of a paper strip out of a hat. Pull gaming's equivalent of the French beggar and kills your only shot at peace. And I'm fucking serious, man. Kill it! With Fireman! Feels like it was only yesterday when Capcom's abusive parenting and racism towards robot children was making headlines. Canceling hyped up games for likely shitty reasons. Drool sleeping on the franchise that made them a household name for years. And like that, like an angel leaving hell to fetch us heaven, Mr. KG Inafune said, fuck all y'all. The world needs some blue robot goodness. I'ma head out. And head out he did. Only... Forgot to bring that goodness. Pinned up a call to finance on the internet's own help wanted sign. Kickstarter. Mighty number nine. Hell yeah. As in, yeah. Hell sounds good right now. Obliterating its pledge goals. Revitalizing the public's passion and faith for one of gaming's finest. Restoring the hope of millions. And then it all rained puke chunks. Over a full year of radio silence and delays. Leaving the faithful funders in the dark. Only to pop out of it to jump scare the public with the horrifically underwhelming junk heap. Causing irreparable damage to Inafune's new studio and Kickstarters in their entirety. And you just had to wind up that punch, huh? Give us hope, then tossed it in a buzzsaw. Four million goddamn dollars in over three years for what? Something not even half as good as the worst real Mega Man game? Kicking's a love tap at this point. Ship this dead horse to the glue factory and stick this memory to a dark corner just like Capcom did. A long, hard day of shattered hopes. Personal plans downed by the brunt of reality's harsh check. Agony I can't escape. Alas, not but one night betwixt the pages of a good story sets me free. Telling me a towering tale gives my villainous days endings worth keeping. It's all we could ever want. The happily ever after. This is filth. Crash. Crash. <laughs> Everyone's been read that one book that's awesome all the way through until the last few pages. Cue the shitty ending that ruins everything. Perhaps the most infamous software disappointment in all of modern Nintendo. Post-2007 Paper Mario blew a gory, gaping, gangrene-coated hole in the Mario RPG Ensemble's left leg. And big shock, that dead tissue is still dead. Despite having an elder wizard for a doctor, I hate making those that genuinely like Sticker Star and Color Splash uncomfortable. But for you all to really understand how inhumanely scarring these nerf nukes really were to the vast majority, try to imagine a time when these games fucking meant something. Magical worlds, profoundly professional passion, and mechanical and strategic excellence, unflinching in the face of time. Oh right! You don't have to imagine. The legend's true. So why did you throw all that away? Watch the video in the corner card if you really need to hear the big problems. But I'm just 
hurt. I can no longer fall peacefully asleep to a magical chapter of Mario once upon a time. I have to take the nightmare of creatively sterile, unfulfilling, boring as Fuck! Worst sellers with admittedly gorgeous covers taking up shelf space. Sure, they look pretty, but oh god, don't read them. I'll say it again. This isn't Paper Mario, it's Mario-shaped paper. If they came before the other three, there would be no problem here. But it's too late. You've shown us what you can do, and until you care enough to do it again, don't you dare read where they once read. <laughs> I couldn't even imagine what it's like being on top. Those comments should be interesting. But truly, look at you, up in the clouds on Jupiter. You're standing on the whole universe for your cover shot of hot shit quarterly. You have any idea what kind of pain you're in for should you fall? No. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I don't think you realize how loud the human voice can actually scream. This mic's a replacement. This is a retake. I murdered the last one recording this segment. A capital F in the chat for this brave, brave soldier. And right back on top of the atomic fuck you! Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts deserves. I know a lot of people say this ruined my childhood, and that's stupid, but this crime against space-time tried its damnedest to, and almost succeeded. Imagine your best friend from childhood falling into an eight-year coma. You wait by his bedside every day of each of those, unsure he'll even wake up again. But when he magically comes back, he's now a car-obsessed preppy asshole with no memory of the fun and no care for you. Not so bad, huh? Still worth a try. Surely, I hate this fucking game. Nothing anyone can say will ever sway me. This is defamation and the fattest middle finger I've ever been given. Oh yeah, the game is a boring ass vat of molten butt sludge barfed in and out of Gruntilda's hairy ear hole even the goddamn Gizmondo's too good for. But I don't give a damn about its quality. It shot two of my favorite childhood games and any hope of them ever getting sequels in the face with an ugly, blocky grin on its own, completely trivializing the beautiful wonder of magical adventure so many of us were shaped by. It's a fucking insult. Thankfully, we won in the end, you lifeless bastard. Knowing when to let bygones be bygones is crucial in keeping happy. Sometimes you can't do anything about it, and you gotta let the past die before it kills you. But listen to me, I'll say that again, sometimes. But when everyone knows for an indisputable fact that you can do everything about it, letting that past die is what's gonna kill you. You disappoint me more than anybody else, Valve. <laughs> Casual reminder that it's perfectly okay to cry, and even more so to let others see you do it. But, uh, as something somehow even more uncomfortable to discuss than goddamn Sticker Star and Nuts and Bolts combined, Valve's detachment from the holy water spigot is tragic. Once the dispersers of the deepest, most beautiful software pool, PC gaming had ever seen is now a neglectful father putting hobbies before family. I'll put it straight, I don't give a demon's damn about VR. I wholeheartedly feel it's an overhyped, overpriced fad with minimal sustain as an industry standard, despite the fascinating tech. Well, guess who disagrees with me? Ooh, better yet, guess who disagrees with me so hard that they tunnel visioned close to all of their resources into it, and that's where it gets uncomfortable. I'm yelling callously at a creator for doing what they want, 
That's disgusting. It makes me feel awful. But at the same time, what about what we want? The consumer, the loyal fan that protects you from heat stroke. Do you think we like watching our favorite IPs die because their rich daddies too busy swatting at digital bugs? Portal, Left 4 Dead, Team Fortress 2, my third favorite game of all time, abandoned at worst, and drip fed at the absolute best. I'm so glad CSGO and Dota 2 fans have the luxury of consistent love. But guess what? Ice Frog and Hidden Path aren't the father. They're the beautiful uncle who always wanted to be a father. And the fact that this is all by absolute choice really hurts me. It hurts a lot of us. And this isn't even considering stuff like that stupid ass card game they made. And they do it because they feel invincible. Must be intoxicating. Others can relate. Blizzard, Konami, Rare. <laughs> you taught the gaming world the consequences of not looking back. You better have more than a piece of wood covering yours. This is being Fawful's Minion. Good night, team. <laughs> And now, give it up for the high tier patrons! Shade2800, Panther J, Tubazo1989, Diamond Ice, Skellington977, Mathtron5000, Goldsbro TSG, Thomas Drury, Lucario Smash246, God Falking Dammit, Alfredo Jones, Love, Sefi90, Zero Z, Jake Arnstom, Morgan Arvite, Squeegee Luigi, BF Rio, John the Pink, Renaku, Lord of Shadow, Cortamanch437, Azazel the Undying, Cody Thomas, Peter Shepard, Solitaire Seamus, Christopher, GTY200, Belkin, Michael Boyd, Steve, Masao, Exeox, put 9 volt in Smash Bros, please, Arctic Kaiju, Gaming Griffin, Burn 100B, Patrick Sandlin, Maze Arcana, Jinxiest, Kyle Wee 21, Ray the Snivy, Douglas Jenkins, Blue 9999, Eddie Toxpin, Sonic Sceptile Warrior, Nathaniel Sterling, Roberto Del Fuego, Smash Mario Pro 2000, Grandmaster. Master Augustus, Lucky 1313 Pikachu Crusher 26, and Kenneth Gutierrez. May we meet again! <laughs> <laughs>